Hi everyone and welcome to day 5 of this 10 on 10 series but first we would be discussing the homework that I gave you in the last session. First I asked you the markers of the NK cell which most of you answered correctly that is CD 16, 56 and CD 94 which is a recent exam question. And second I showed you a picture of Ewing sarcoma from a radiology point of view that is showing you the onion skin periosteal reaction and I asked you for this rosette over here which is the classical Homer right pseudo rosette and as all of you told me this is seen in the brain tumor medulloblastoma as well. Now let's get going with today's class. However, I hope you're also following the alternate day telegram quizzes that I have been posting on my group and channel and many of you were asking for the link. So all of those are provided in the description of this video. Let's get going with day five for the day. And over here, the first question is a very recent INICT question, a simple yet an important one that which of these is not typically employed for the detection of lipid accumulation. So for lipid, as all of us know, we have the classical Sudan black because that gives a black color obvious then we also have Sudan 4 although you don't have to know the color it gives an orangish color so anything from the Sudan family is for lipid and then how can we forget the oil red O which gives a red color so obviously the one which is not employed is toluidine blue and that has been a recent exam question asking you what is toluidine blue for it is a special stain for mast cells and basophils previous year question very important I hope you've also not forgotten that toluidine blue has been used somewhere in microbiology as a part of the Albert stain and after this series we are going to start with the series for microbiology as well. So Albert stain is something which is used for the volutin granules of Corine bacterium diphtheria and that has toluidine blue as one of its constituents. Moving on to question two over here, a lengthy yet a simple one. A 60 year old woman presents with bone pain and tenderness over the lower back and there are multiple lytic lesions in the vertebral column. When you see multiple lytic lesions in the vertebral column in a 60 year old, always think think of multiple myeloma very very important now let's see the lab tests because in multiple myeloma we usually first want to delineate that yes this is a monoclonal uh, cancer that is arising from the plasma cells so it is a monoclonal gammopathy which is mentioned over here then as per the crab criteria we must know that there is going to be bony lytic lesions which is mentioned there is calcium increase and serum calcium levels are also elevated so two things are assessed over here then a for anemia which is also written over here and r is for renal insufficiency which is not written but then we can't get everything in the exam right written in the question right so this is going in favor of the crab criteria and they have very clearly mentioned plasma cell proliferation asking you that there is some inclusions which they have mentioned and they have given you a picture over here that yes these inclusions are there as you notice they are in the cytoplasm of the cell because there are two types of inclusions that they will ask you like over here they are in the cytoplasm of the cell these are known as the Russell bodies if these inclusions by chance would have been over here that is in the nucleus of the cell I would have called them Dutcher bodies yes this is a case of multiple myeloma and what are Russell and Dutcher bodies made up of that's the question these are composed of immunoglobulins that is basically the antibodies and most common antibody that increases in multiple myeloma is IgG so this is a very important question the antibodies these images they are a sure shot question in the exam moving on to question number three which of the following markers will help you in the diagnosis of GIST never be in a hurry because as soon as we hear GIST we want to mark CKIT or CD117 but they have clearly mentioned that CKIT is negative so now what is CKIT CKIT is the other name that we have for CD117 7 right and that is anyway negative so I cannot select that then I go for the specific marker that is going to be dog 1 I hope you've not forgotten gist it's classically known as the gastrointestinal stromal tumor and the word gastro tells us that it can occur in the stomach intestinal tells us it can occur in the intestine but obviously the more common location is going to be the gastro the stomach stromal tumor whenever mentioned will tell us that this is not an epithelial tumor this is a mesenchymal tumor in fact if someone asks you which is the most common mesenchymal tumor in the stomach it is gist where is it coming from again a PYQ which now no one asks you it comes from the cells of Kahal these are the normal pacemaker cells of our GIT but why does this occur what happens in these normal cells in these normal cells there are there are mutations now what are the mutations is a question in surgery that they will ask you number one and the most common is the CKIT or CD117 mutation and because of this mutation actually what happens is an increase in tyrosine kinase levels that is why guys in surgery and medicine you study that for the treatment of gist we can give tyrosine kinase inhibitors and that comes as the name of imatinib 
coming on to the next after this most common is ckt or cd117 but other than this what was asked in the last exam pdgfra mutations can be seen and in small kids or pediatric patients sdh succinate dehydrogenase mutations can also be seen s for s so this will be seen in small kids or pediatric gist will be associated with sdh mutation now coming to the markers as i told you sensitive is cd117 or ckt but if that is negative then you go for the specific one and that is going to be dog one which is the answer over here moving on to question four is a topic which most students have a problem with so let's try and simplify it here we have a two week old male infant brought to the pediatrician with prolonged bleeding from the umbilical stump whenever you see this kind of a history you know you're dealing into that platelet coagulopathy wala chapter and you have to pick out something either from the platelet disorders or from the coagulation disorders moving on to the bleeding uh, has uh, started soon after the umbilical cord fell off and has not stopped so they did a few blood tests but they found that the PT is normal and the APTT is also normal and the platelet count is also normal so once the platelet count has come out to be normal I have ruled out anything to do with ITP because this can't be thrombocytopenia now when PT and APTT are also normal the intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway this means both of them are normal then what exactly is the problem because over here they've asked me which factor is deficient but ma'am if PT APTT are normal then this means all the factors are working fine but over here you need to be aware of something which i'm going to teach you now and that is to do with this pathway so what is this pathway there are two pathways right of coagulation extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway and we all know that extrinsic pathway is measured by the pt test we had learnt it as pet and intrinsic pathway is measured by the aptt test now what are parts of this pathway and we had learned it because this is very tough to remember how is a blood clot formed so this had we had learned as a 10 everything has to be 10 10 10 which means that extrinsic pathway will be factor 7 and factor 3 so factor 7 and factor 3 7 plus 3 is 10 and they will now activate factor 10 so 10 for 10 in the intrinsic pathway also we went along with something known as 10 e 10 now what is 10 e 10 that is factor 12 then factor activates factor 11 that goes and activates factor 9 along with factor 8 will activate factor 10 so it's a sequence or a chain of events that is happening 12 11 9 and 8 will activate factor 10 7 and 3 from here will activate factor 10 now once factor 10 is made now what comes ahead is going to be the common pathway and in common pathway you go by half what is the half of factor 10 half of 10 is 5 so that in the presence of 5 what is the half of 5 2.5 but the there can't be such a factor so two of course then that is going to activate factor two and that is half going to activate factor one so rule of half 10 5 2 1 and 1 is nothing but fibrin right fibrinogen fibrin and that is the blood clot so ma'am but if pt and aptt both have come out to be normal this means all these factors are normal then what kind of a deficiency will i select do you know the pathway doesn't end here when i say clot is formed now your next step will be that you want a stable clot to form and that is where the role of the last factor comes fibrin stabilizing factor clot stabilizing factor that is factor 13 but please note your machines that measure what is how is pt aptt done in a laboratory in a pathology lab it is done by a machine do you know the machine only measures till this step so the machine can only measure till factor one or the clot formation the machine does not measure factor 13 which means that even if pt and aptt are coming out to be normal that doesn't make sure that factor 13 is normal factor 13 can still be deficient and that is what has happened in this patient PT APTT are normal this means all these factors are normal but yet this infant is having umbilical cord stump bleeding which means it is factor 13 which is actually deficient and that is the answer as I mentioned factor 13 is known as the fibrin stabilizing factor when that is obvious it's a clot stabilizing factor but they will ask you the fancy name for it and it is also known as the lackey Laurent factor especially FMG students I know you must have not given too much of attention to this part because it's in the main video but this comes a lot in medicine and that is why I have covered it over here moving on to the next question making it a little easy over here we have matched the following with lesions of TB and their sites on which they occur so what we're going to do revise all the lesions and come back to this question first I've made two diagrams of lungs over here because if the lesion is occurring only in the lung for TB you will call it the gone focus so if it occurs over here I call it gone focus if it occurs as a complex that along with the lung the hilar lymph nodes are also getting affected like over here if the 
the lung and the lymph node are getting affected now i want to call it gone complex and within this complex if there is any kind of calcification that will occur which the radiologist will tell me now i will call it rankes complex let's divide the lung again this time i have divided it by the bone that is collar bone the clavicle so obviously the topmost area of the lung is the apex a little bit of the part is supraclavicular and most of the lung is infraclavicular and in the same order you will write it as spa which means on the apex we are going to have the simon focus on the supraclavicular region pearl focus will occur so i will write pearl focus occurs on the supraclav and finally asman focus is occurring on the infraclavicular region so as i said go from top to bottom and learn it as simon pearl and asman these were everything to do with the lungs but if i say and change simon to simon make the word a little heavy then i have to make the organ also a little heavy in simon was for lung apex and simon is for liver so liver tb would be focus known as simon coming to vigert v for v so if blood vessels are involved especially because i'm talking about the lungs most commonly i will say if pulmonary vein involvement has occurred it is the vigert focus and rick's focus is when there is involvement of the brain we had learnt it that brainy people are very rich so rick's focus is going to occur in the brain coming all the way back going as per um, the first one that is pearl's focus as per my spa mnemonic pearl's focus is going to be the supraclavicular region coming on to the simon focus simon as the spa mnemonic again goes for the apex coming on to the gone complex complex means two things so lung and lymph node and finally coming on to vigert v for v so it is blood vessel involvement moving on to question 6 which comes across as a spotter i have given you a pigment i hope you could identify this is the skin and pigment of course has to be melanin now if it is melanin i've asked you what is the special stain and the special stain always is going to be mason fontana never ever think of calling this mason trichrome i've always taught you mason fontana tanning of the skin will occur don't call it mason trichrome because trichrome is different trichrome is a stain tri color three colors you will use this whenever you want to differentiate muscle versus collagen always remember mr muscle is red collagen is blue whenever i want to differentiate mason trichrome i will use if i'm confused between muscle versus collagen because muscle will take a red color collagen will take a blue color so let's assume you have a case of keloid or any scar which has a lot of collagen it will come out to be very very blue in color coming to question number 7 i have got a radiology and a pathology image of course it's a lung field and over here you can appreciate that there is something like a coin lesion forming and you know with coin lesion and when i see this over here normal histology don't forget this is the blue color cartilage so yeah yes this is the lung and the most common benign tumor of the lung pulmonary hamartoma i've always taught you hamare paise hamara popcorn so hamare paise will tell you that radiologically it is going to show you coin lesion and hamara popcorn will tell you that it can show you popcorn calcification also so pulmonary hamartoma but when i saw it under the microscope i saw a lot of cartilage which means it's a type of a chondroma or a cartilaginous tumor it's the most common oma tells you na benign tumor of the lungs coming on to question 8 fmg exam coming up so this has to be discussed it's a brain tumor usually you get the history of a female and in most cases it's a pregnant female reason being they want to tell you a state which is very very rich in progesterone because progesterone has a direct impact on this brain tumor and of course it's arising from the meninges you can see this over here this is a classical meningioma everything in this is going gol gol round and round so if you ask me how are the tumor cells arranged i will say they are going round and round that is whirling of the tumor cells if you ask me how is calcium arranged that is also going round and round and that is samoma bodies always remember its association with progesterone rich state like pregnancy will usually be given coming on to question 9 another normal over here i'll give you an organ at least this is a normal histology of the stomach and this is also going to be your homework for the day i'll give you an identification in the stomach these are the three main cells that are present the cells which are present at the top which are looking little empty these are referred to as the foveolar cells so foveolar cells why are they empty because they are going to have a lot of mucus production mucin is produced that's why they are looking so empty then as i go down i can see there are two colors there are pink 
color cells and there are blue color cells. So I have two cells in the stomach, right? Parietal and chief. Remember P for P. The pink color cells are going to be the parietal cells and the blue color cells are going to be the chief cells. Now this is your tiny little normal anatomy physiology homework today. What is the parietal cell going to release and what is the chief cell going to release is what you will type in the comments the only homework that you have for the day. Moving on to the last, I've given you an epiphyseal bone tumor and I think um, you, if you, if you've not studied bone tumors ever, you're getting this right. Of course, epiphyseal is the location where it occurs but even without that knowledge, you can see a lot of giant cells. So of course, this is a giant cell tumor. I can see two types of cells. One of course are the giant cells having multinucleated. So we call them multinucleated giant cells and then I have cells which are having single single nucleus. So I call them mononuclear cells over here. Do you know when I say giant cell tumor, you feel that giant cells are the tumor tumor element but that is wrong. The actual tumor element over here are the cells with one one nucleus. So this could be a question which is the tumor part of a giant cell tumor. It's actually the cells with a single nucleus. That is the tumor part. Giant cells are just a reaction to the tumor. Well, with that, the 10 questions are done for the day. Your homework is what are the functions or what do parietal cells and chief cells of the stomach release? A very simple homework. And of course, tomorrow you will get a quiz on Telegram and tomorrow we are starting with the hematology questions on Telegram. Thereafter, you know the rest of the schedule is in front of you and you will be following this. I hope you're enjoying the series. I'm personally checking every answer. Some of you make errors. I correct you there, but most of you get it right. So I just drop a heart, letting you know that I have checked on your answer. So I'm waiting for your answers today as well and I'll see you in the next session.